moving quickly. Another hand off to Rankin. Rankin finds a hole. He's at the 30. Makes it to the 20. He's got one man to beat. Rankin walks into the end zone. Into the backfield. Braden Wright looks over top. He's going to try to find a man. He's got Alex Tatum. Tatum bobbles it, but he's in the end zone. What a connection between Braden Wright and Alex Tatum. Hand off to Rankin. Rankin right up the middle, and he's in the end zone for a Bearcat touchdown. you that the views expressed in today's show do not reflect the views of KZLX, KNWT, or Northwest Missouri State University. Thanks for tuning in and enjoy the show. And welcome back to the Weekend Sports Kickoff. I'm Sam Steinmeier. With me is Roman Metcalf, Grant Allen, and Sam Reeves. And now we're going to talk about the NFL Week 2. You know, just previewing Week 2 of the NFL season. And guys, um, there was a lot of injuries in week two and uh, a lot to talk about. We'll, I assume we all sat down uh, at, you know, sat down Sunday and just watched football. So what did you guys think of week two? I, I thought it was uh, a crap show, for lack of a better term. But, um, you know, with, with all the Crap inju- show in what way? That's what I was going to say. With, with just injuries and, oh, okay. and, and, and the way of, yeah, injury-wise. That's, I mean... I don't think that there's – you see big stars, Saquon, uh, George Kittle got hurt, uh, Jimmy Garoppolo. I mean, I mean, there's a big – there's some big names out there that got hurt, and it's – and the season just started. And I feel for those guys that got hurt because their season just started, you know, and it's – I mean, back. the entire 49ers defensive line is basically gone. Nick Bosa and Solomon Thomas both out uh, with a torn ACL out the rest of the year. Also, D. Ford got hurt, so – uh, he's not season ending, but he's still on the injury report, and I he think he's. Ford got hurt. I think he's going to be out. <laughs> right. What? That never yeah. happens. Raheem Mostert also. Raheem Mostert. Jimmy had an Garoppolo. 80-yard carry against the Jets for a touchdown, first play from scrimmage, and then goes and gets hurt. That's unfortunate for him. Michael I'm, Thomas being out for as long as he is. I know that was Week One, huge loss, huge and we loss. saw how much that really hurt the Saints. Um, Christian McCaffrey. Christian McCaffrey also huge. got hurt. That really hampers the Panthers' offense. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, especially, if, especially if they wanted to have a chance in the division that they're in, the Panthers that that really, really hurts them because you have to play Tom Brady twice a year now. You got to play Drew Brees twice a year, and you got to play Matt Ryan in that Falcons offense. Now, I don't, I was How about those Falcons. Yeah, I'm not, oh, I'm not boy. impressed. I'm not. I was really rooting for them to win, but that was oh, not. That I was not impressive. That was oh, that hurts my heart, Roman. I I know you're a Dallas fan, and I'm sorry, but that was I. I Sunday was fun. I'll give credit where credit's due. Uh, and that it was, was impressive. Good... That's the word I would use to describe it... Sunday for your Dallas Cowboys, Sam. It was impressive. Fun. Dang. That's, you know, that's a questionable way I mean, to put yeah. it. For you, it was a blast. Qu- I mean, questionable. You're... Okay. First half, not fun. Not fun true, at all. True. Second half, very fun. Dak Prescott, I mean, I'm going to say Dak Prescott balled out. He went off. And he, uh, that, was uh, da- that was scary, though, because I did watch that game, and he, it looked like he about got hurt there and uh, had to go out for a So few I believe that was probably just he got, the, he got hit very hard yeah, he had a on a rollout. Play. Uh, on a rollout play. I think he just got the wind knocked out of him. He came back two plays later and then led the combat the rest of the way. So uh, not too uh, you know, worried about that. Uh, but what I am worried about for the Dallas Cowboys is uh, their defense. But oh, I'm we'll, get in, we'll probably get into all this. Mike uh, McCarthy. I don't think he's the guy. He's made some very, very stupid decisions already. I agree. Two, like, two one or three one. in two weeks. One and one. We're one and oh one. That's God. that's okay. They that, should be I'm two fine. and two or two and zero oh, rather. They should be, but they're not. It's okay. <laughs> I, 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 Way to look at the positive. It's better to be one. Good. It's better to be one and one than zero oh and two. Especially <laughs> when they could have been zero oh and two as easily as they could oh, have yeah, been. Yeah. As uh, you know, you mentioned Pick records. Pick up the ball, Atlanta. You you mentioned records. Dallas is one and one, but there is a variety of two and zero oh teams in the uh, NFL right now. Buffalo. 2 and 0 Baltimore and Pittsburgh in the AFC North both 2 and 0 Tennessee 2 and 0 uh in the AFC West the Chiefs and the Raiders both still undefeated nobody in the NFC West undefeated uh in the NFC North the Packers and surprisingly the Bears undefeated mm-hmm. I mean uh, in that NFC North picture I the, mean you're either really good or really bad and the NFC West the NFC West is the best conference in football as the Cardinals Rams and Seahawks all undefeated through week 2 that is that's those four teams might make the playoffs in the NFC, and that's crazy. It's wild to see that. Mm. Yeah, it's 
And I wouldn't necessarily predict it, but it's possible. It's very possible. I, I predicted heard. three of these teams to make the you playoffs. Did. I got the Cardinals, Seahawks, and 49ers. Not too sure about the Rams, but the Rams are proving me wrong. I'm unsure about the 49ers. I well, I, I mean, now I am because now they've lost a lot of their defense and you know their, mm-hmm. their offense is also injured. Coming into the season, I wasn't, but now it's looking a little scary. Next year when they have Aaron Rodgers, it'll be good. <laughs> oh, I don't think they're going to have Aaron Rodgers next year. <laughs> I, I'm just... I don't think they I think they might make a move at quarterback, but that's way down the line. Uh um, so, you know, we see all these undefeated teams. Who stays who do you guys think stays undefeated the longest? I mean, we've got a lot lot to pick. Uh one team, obviously, one team that surprises me about being two and oh is the Raiders. How about them? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, good, honestly I really thought they'd still start the year 0 and two. And to come back and both their games have been comeback wins and that is that's really impressive. I, I think that they're uh they look decent. I mean, it's two games, or it's just two games, but we'll see how they play against interconference squads and those tougher teams. You know, like the Patriots, they have them coming up, so we'll see how they play against them and how they fare. And uh, I'm sorry, guys, but um, you know the, that other team in the AFC West, uh, I don't think they stay undefeated after this week. I think the Chiefs are gonna go down this week. And I'm, I'm glad you said something like that, real quick, and I'll. I, I think, it, it, just in my personal opinion, I think that last week was a trap game. We did good, came out. I don't think there's uh, – but there, there's trap games in the NCAA. I don't think there's trap games in the NFL. But I uh, – Everyone's I, good. Honestly, Everyone can beat anyone. Yep. Honest to God, I really think that they're – the Chiefs have waited – the Chiefs and Andy Reid have waited to really open up the playbook. They've just played really – you know, bland football in these last two I mean, weeks, they and they're going to come up and really open it up against the uh, they, Fal- uh, Ravens. They opened up the playbook against the Texans, and they, they did well against the Texans. It's just they put, they came out flat. They, they came out fl- very, very flat, flat against the Chargers, just couldn't get anything going on offense. And, you know, it's uh, – I mean, that happens to teams. No, no team can score like 34 points every single week. No. They're going to have down weeks, and mm-hmm. last week was a down week for the Chiefs. And, you know, I think if they have another down week, if they start like that again, it could get ugly quick. Uh, but, you know, it's that, that the Ravens-Chiefs game Monday night is probably the best, probably going to be the best game of the week. I feel like there's a lot of corrections that we kind of need to make about our assumptions going into the year, and we'll really have them affirmed after this week. I think I so, mean, too. you got to give credit to Jacob Blair. I feel like he was the only one of us that was really on the Raiders. <laughs> uh, he might have been. He, um, <laughs> Jacob, and, not here today, but still – uh, you know, in our thoughts, he was on the Raiders and, this uh, year. I feel bad for picking the Vikings because they have let me down a lot. And it yeah. looks like the Packers are going to have a cakewalk to like another thirteen and three season, and then they're going to lose in like the second round of the playoffs. Well, like, I don't the, think they're that good. Welcome back to the weekend sports kickoff. Sam Steinmeier, Roman Metcalf. Grant Allen and Sam Reeves with you here as we've we've gone over week two. We talked about some of the undefeated teams in the NFL still. Now it's time to, you know, go ahead and I guess preview week three and then get into our picks. So uh guys, what I'll just start off what's what's the best matchup you think? I know we already kinda of talked about it earlier, but what do you think the best matchup is this week? Las Vegas versus New England. Really? Yes. Okay. okay. I was, uh, that's interesting because I thought you everyone was going to say Chiefs Ravens. Yeah. Yeah. Chiefs Ravens is going to be an amazing game. Well, now, now I think now Roman's not wrong. That game, the, the, game. This, the Raiders Patriots game, sure. is going to be a good game. I, okay. I don't think that the Patriots saw that, but I think that this is going to be a proven game for the Raiders. I think that if okay. if they're the real deal, they will go out and they will beat the Patriots and Cam Newton in Foxborough because the game is in Foxborough. So we'll see if the Raiders are the real deal after this Sunday. It's not like there's fans there. It's not going to make a big difference. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't Tra- matter. If, if you're Travel, playing, you're playing. Travel could make a little bit of a difference. But, yeah, I, like you said, I mean, the the big, like, um, home field advantages like Arrowhead, it's not, it's not that big of a home field advantage. I mean, it's a tiny, like, little – uh, advantage that and you, this you season, get to sleep in your own bed. That's you mentioned it. yesterday too, Sam. Uh, or yeah, Sam on day to day picks is Bill Belichick doesn't lose at home. Um, he doesn't. It doesn't matter if there's fans of the stands exact, or not. Exactly. He doesn't lose at Foxborough with Tom Brady for most true, of his career, though. So we true. don't know how. And, got, well, he hasn't lost at Foxborough mm-hmm. with Cam Newton either. Small sample size, but yeah. So, small sample size, only one game. It'll but be an interesting game. 
It will. As uh, we move into week three now, is got our picks. Everyone's got their picks set. Yes. All right, we'll get into it. The first game on our docket is the 2-0 and Chicago Bears taking on the 0-2 Atlanta Falcons in Atlanta as the spread is now 3.5 for Atlanta, the 0-2 team. And uh, I think that's fair. Yeah. You know, they have the better offense, and they're at, they are at home. Uh, but I think this is going to be a close game. And I don't know if I, Atlanta got into a shootout with the Cowboys last week because both defenses were kind of meh. Now it's a good defense against the Bears, I think, and a bad offense with the Bears. Sorry, Mitch Trubisky, but it's a bad offense. Uh, I think this could be a lower-scoring game. This is a very interesting matchup because, like you said, Sam, that Falcons offense, even though they are 0-2, is very, very, very dangerous. And that Bears defense is why the Bears are 2-0. and So seeing those two units match up against each other will be very interesting to see who comes out on top because I think whoever wins the matchup on that side of the ball has a good chance of winning this game as a whole because, yeah, I mean, I think the spread with three point three and a half point favor to Atlanta is probably about right. Um, but you know, this game should be an interesting one to follow. Am I picking it now, or are we? I mean, I thought uh, you guys have anything else to say on the on the game? I I think that the Falcons are, are very dangerous on offense. I think that their defense kind of had a meltdown last week, and it was not smart of their special teams to. They also had a meltdown on special teams, which could have won them the game. But I think that they're going to come out here and just whoop the Chicago Bears up and down the field, like they did the Cowboys in the first few ha- first two quarters of the game. And then we'll see if they can hold on to a big lead there. And so I guess I guess we'll start the picking now since. Roman's Cardi made his pick. You going with the Falcons, Roman? Yeah, I'm going with the Grant? Falcons. Um, I think when you have a good defense versus a good offense, it's not like the good uh, defense necessarily counters the good offense. What matters is the offensive line, and I think the Falcons mm-hmm. might have the best offensive line in football. And really? I the Falcons have the best offensive line in football? It's really good. It's really underrated. I think Ooh, it's I them, know. the Ravens. I think it's the Cowboys and the Colts. The probably. Cowboys' offense one right now is really hurt. That's the only reason I'm not. Yeah, but when it's fully healthy, I think mm-hmm. the Cowboys and the Colts. The point have is, the I think they have two. a really good offensive line, and I think that they're going to be able to stop Khalil Mack. They can stop Keem Hicks. I don't think anyone can stop Khalil Mack in the end. Just how how no one can stop Aaron Donald. Well, at the end of the day, I think the Falcons win. That's fair, Sam. Um, Falcons win a close one, but this is definitely not going to be a blowout. We'll see. Well, I am on an island because I think the Bears' defense will do just enough right. to uh, beat this Falcons. I, after last week's game, I don't have any confidence in the Falcons at all. The they're going to find Chicago a way to lose. Bears. How crazy is that? I also think that Th- they're going to find a way to lose this game. The Bears are going to win right. somehow. This team has rallied behind Dan Quinn at the end of last season. That's the why he still has his job. And, uh, I don't know if they should rally behind him anymore because <laughs> if they're they've shown. I mean, I know it's not that. all his fault. There's got to be some accountability on like both sides, but man, I know. But they've shown a willingness to do that, and I think that he's really on the hot seat now, and he's going to have to rally his troops. And yeah, they got to win this game. And we'll go to our second game on the docket: the Washington Football Team taking on the Cleveland Browns, or the team name here. Insert team name. Here. Insert team name here is Jacob Blair lights to call them versus the Cleveland Browns. So, uh, you know, Washington, you know, they had a very good game against the Eagles, uh, 27 unanswered points, but then they got the doors blown off of them by the Arizona Cardinals, like I, I, like I thought they would. Uh, and then you have the Cleveland Browns, who got the doors blown off of them week one, bounce back, get a five-point win, not very convincing, but a win nonetheless against the Bengals. Yeah, um, Washington, their defense is okay at times. Um, Grant, I know you really like their defense, um, but man, I'm not as high on it as I, you are. Um, their offense in Washington, outside of Terry McLaurin, and that's about it, really. I mean, they don't have much else on that side of the ball. So even though the Browns haven't really looked that impressive this so far this year, really at all, I still think on paper they are the much better team and sometimes on paper, matchups don't matter. But I think when it's this big of a discrepancy, it does matter, which is why I'm taking the Browns. Yeah, Grant, I'm like to, he kind of called. To no one's surprise, I'm taking the Washington I knew football You're taking team. insert team name here. Okay. Yes, I'm taking insert Did you take them here. against the Cardinals or did no. you take the Cardinals? Because I okay. think Kyler Murray's too fast. 
Well, he was. But if he was fast. a little slower, you would have taken the Washington. If he wasn't a mobile quarterback, okay, I would. that's true. <sighs> All right, because I don't believe in the Falcons O line. I don't. I. I you don't Baltimore. believe it in the Falcons O line. You mean or the, the Browns? The Browns, Browns O line. Oh, the I Cardinals don't believe in the card okay. or in the Browns O line. I don't believe in the Browns at all. I I love Baker Mayfield as a personality, as a player. He's fun to watch, but I don't. He was fun to watch at Oklahoma. He's disappointed me a lot, and I don't have faith in him anymore, sadly. Um, and so I'm going the Washington football team, who I think at the end of the year we might have a discussion if they have the best defense in football. No. Okay. That, that's not going to be a discussion, all Roman. Right. <laughs> who are you taking? Uh, you know. I, I I don't like any really any of these teams. I, I like the red uh, football teams. Football team. <laughs> you uh, like the football team. I almost had a almost had a slip up there. Yeah, the Washington football team's defense. I I like Chase Young. I like. I mean, they have Landon Collins. They have another safety out of Penn State, Troy have, Apoc. So I don't know how to pronounce they, his last name. They have names. Yeah. They just don't have the. Yeah, they don't put yeah. the names together. Yeah. They, but, in. I'm not convinced with the Browns because they they beat they've played the Ravens and the Bengals. The Bengals are not that good, so I'm not. I think that I'm gonna have to go with the Washington football team really? on this one. I, see, wow. I this is this is oh my for Baker Mayfield. This game I feel like is a prove him because he he. I think he's done decent, but I don't think he's he's not lived up to his first round hype, and he really needs to. I prove think he. Something. I think last week was a prove him game for Baker Mayfield. But that was against he the proved, Bengals. He proved it. He proved that he can bounce back, bounce back from a bad loss and win, and he, he did, did just that. Mm-hmm. He proved that, and I think this week he will just continue to get his relationship. It looks like him and OBJ are on the same page, kind of now. Sort of. He'll get Jarvis Landry in the mix, maybe Austin Hooper. Um, you know, Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt are. Probably the best running back tandem they in the are. NFL. They're just so good. And I don't think – I know you're high on the Washington football team defense, but they're not good enough to stop all these guys. The Browns win this one. It might be close, but I still think the Browns. I don't think they can – I don't think Washington can score enough to keep up with – That too. With the they don't have anybody on offense. They, they, yeah, they just don't. That's the problem. I they're, don't believe just, in Dwayne Haskins. I don't either. Welcome back to the Weekend Sports Kickoff. Sam's Time Hour, along with Grant Allen and Sam Reeves. With you here, Roman Metcalf had to leave the show early before that last segment. If you're just tuning in, or I guess if you did listen to the NFL picks and then went away and now are just coming back for your favorite segment of the week, it's off my rocker, fellas. Yes, and, very uh, good. So, you know, if anyone's not, everyone, if anyone's new to the show, this is where uh, someone comes in and... Uh, you just give your most outrageous take of what you think is that. We've had a lot of good ones. Mm-hmm. Pat, uh, I believe the best one last year, Nolan Brooks. The Grizzlies were going to win the NBA championship and begin a dynasty with Jaron mm-hmm. Jackson Jr. Mm-hmm. and John Morant. Uh, we didn't think it would take this long for uh, the, the uh, you know, uh, off my rocker to be proven wrong. Uh, should have been proven wrong by now, but the Grizzlies have, been, have since been exiled from the bubble so that they off my rockers the playoffs, now did they? i don't think they did i don't think they, no. they were battling with the trailblazers with the blazers yeah so they were battling with the blazers for the eight spot didn't get the eight spot but we are here now and uh who wants to go first i can go first if you want me no to. one really wants to go first ever but sam since you All right, since I'll you go. said you, you you will first uh okay my off the rocker consists of two parts Two part. You, I love the multiple part off yeah, my numbers. You got you got to do it. Um, part one: K State will win at Oklahoma on Saturday. They are twenty eight point underdogs at Oklahoma. So yeah, that's part one. That that's a big part. You yes. might you might just need that one part to well, be off your rocker. I think honestly, yes, that that would probably constitute off my rocker. However. It's one game, and it's a pick in a game, so I feel like that's not quite crazy enough. So, so what's the second part? second part is KU will win at Baylor on Saturday yeah, as well. I love it. I love it. Seven, but, but you don't like the first part, though, do you? I don't care. I, right. I, 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 I like uh, K-State. I mean, your sister goes to I mean, K-State, now you're just, too, so you kind of have to. Now you're just crazy. 
Seventeen and a half point underdogs. Has Kansas is KU won a, at Baylor. Has Kansas won a game this year? No. no. They lost to Coastal Carolina. Mm-hmm. They're zero and one. Just still zero and one. I don't yeah. know if they played a game. No. Since mm-hmm. then, I don't think so. You're you're f- so far gone. Thank you. Uh, you are so far off your rocker. I mean, you're off the porch. I'll you're, take that. That's you're okay. off the porch. I mean, Kansas State. The, the first one, you'd just be off your rocker. But when you mention the Kansas Jayhawks and this football team uh, in Lawrence. Honestly, you're, you're KU might be more likely to beat better than K-State is to I mean, beat Oklahoma. I don't think so. I think K-State's got a way better chance to beat Oklahoma because they beat them last year. They be, it was at yeah, Kansas State. Yeah, better team now. But they beat them last year. Uh, Skyler Thompson's still the quarterback. He is, yeah. So, and he's a good quarterback, but they lost a lot, around, a lot around him. Yeah. Uh, losing to Arkansas State last week doesn't didn't, help. Doesn't help. Uh, you know, it make, makes us a little happy in uh, the Northwest Media Department because we see our guy, Juwan Bush, uh, getting some good well, content down good. there in Arkansas. But, Grant, I, I know you probably like that. Uh, you probably wish it's going to happen, but it's not going to yeah, happen. Yeah, I mean, I'd take it. Um, man, <clears throat> I think— Can you name one person on the KU football team? Uh, Puka. Puka the Bazooka Williams. Okay. I think that was the only one I could that's name. About, that's, the, that's the only Hassan one I can name. Defense. Oh, that's on defense. I forgot. And isn't it? No, Deneen is on K-State now. Deneen There's a Deneen on K-State. Hassan Defense doesn't brother. sound like a real person. I don't know who Yeah, no, is. it is his brother. There's like three of them. His brother he's, plays he's, on K-State. Yeah. Hassan Defense does not sound like a real person. I don't know. It I, is a person. Yeah, it is. I don't know who that is, though. So He's not very good. I could have told you Steven Sims Jr., but that's it. <laughs> yeah, Steven Sims anymore. Jr. is now part of the insert team name here. Um, He's the number number two receiver on insert team name here. So, I think. So, is are you going into your off my rocker now? My off my rocker is off the Philadelphia rocket. Eagles will draft Trevor Lawrence. Oh boy! So they're going to draft a quarterback twice, two years in a row. Jalen well, I mean, Hurts and Trevor the thing Lawrence. is, I'm not like Jalen so Hurts is the quarterback of the future. I'm not on that train. <laughs> I'm not, <laughs> I'm not on either. the you need to get rid of Carson Wentz train. But I, I think am. that if you have the first overall pick or you have second pick, whatever. I don't think they're going to take. I don't think they're going to get the first overall pick. J E T S. I think you Jets, could, they Jets, could be Jets. firing their coach. They could. Doug Peterson's out of there. Possibly. He won a Super Bowl. I don't Super think yet. Maybe you give him one more year. Yeah. Um, you, but you you are off your rocker because the Philadelphia Eagles aren't going to get the first overall that's pick. That's why. The other one. I'm and also, if they do, I mean, obviously, if they do, you got to take Trevor Lawrence. So I can see that. I see your yeah. I see your rationale. If they do get it. But it'd also just be dumb because now they have I think you'd three quarterbacks. That's what I was going to say. If, if they do get it, which I don't think they will because I think both the Jets and the Washington insert team name here are worse than they are. Um, and I'm maybe even forgetting a team or two that would be in that category. The, Jagu- the, the Jaguars. Excuse me, the yeah. Jaguars. Yeah. The Lions. The Lions, Lions. yeah. I, right. I so I don't think, think they're going to get it. But if they do, yeah, I'm with you, Grant. I think they trade that pick away. If somehow they get the number one pick. I don't think. I mean, they I'd have. Rather trade, tr- I'd rather trade an injury-prone Carson Wentz and get a dynasty quarterback in Trevor so, Lawrence. So you have Jalen Hurts. So drafting. Tri- everyone thought Jaylen Carson Hurts Wentz was a dynasty was. quarterback, and True. now look at him. True. Yeah. yeah. Um, who's to say well. that doesn't happen to Trevor Lawrence in the Eagles system? Yeah, but That's you know it's not Carson Wentz. Do you? But I don't know if. Tr- yeah. Yeah, I get your point. Um, yeah, that's why we're not the ones drafting these players. Why, I was yeah. going to say, like, la- going into last week. I don't know week, if Trevor had... Lawrence is going to be this good in the NFL. I really True. don't. Uh, yeah. Going into last week, because I wasn't on the show, my off my rocker is going to be Josh Allen wins MVP mm, and leads I his like team that. to a Super Bowl. That's more likely than what you just said here. And I'm like, my that's off too my, ro- that's my too off my rocker was that the Bills would win the Super Bowl, I think was my off my rocker last week, if I remember correctly. In my opinion, that's too likely to pick for an off my rocker. And that is, I mean, I don't think it's too likely because that's not going to happen. Because it's going to be Carson or Dak Prescott. So. No, it's not going to be Dak Prescott. <laughs> that will be the <laughs> NFC, too, yeah. It's probably going to be Russell Wilson, uh, probably. MVP. Yeah, I thought MVP. like that the last couple of years, and it's always somebody else emerges. Kind of like what happened with Drew Brees. He would always. Late. And someone but, would emerge and then just take it from him. All right, so you guys both went football. Sam, surprised you went college football. You went NFL. I'm going to go with you know, the sport we all love. Love to talk about. You know, baseball. All there's right. a mul- There's multiple parts. I like it. Well, okay, kind of multiple parts, but the Rays. I got, I got to go with a homer off my rocker. Okay. okay. The Rays, it lo- it's looking like they're going to play the Blue Jays the first round of the playoffs. Okay. That series in Tropicana Field will go the full three. It's a three-game series. Sure. That will go the full three. The Rays will win that series, but it will go the full three. Then the Rays will sweep 
all the way through the rest of the playoffs until they get to the World Series, where I think they'll play the Padres or the Dodgers, one of those two. Let's just say, let's just say for the fun of it, for you, Sam, let's just say it's the Dodgers. All right, good, sure. And they go seven. They, that, that series goes seven, and they win the World Series. Rays. Your 2020 World Series okay, champion. Okay, so, so is your off my rocket that the Rays win the World Series, or my that all has to happen? My, all, that, all that has to happen. Okay, okay, that's so understandable. That, that'll be crazy. I mean, I think that could happen, but it's just that the fact that you'd predict the future to that level of accuracy. Yeah. The yeah. least likely part of that is, clearly, I mean, I don't think this is the question. Sweeping through the Sweeping through the rest the Blue Jays of, taking them to three. I wouldn't be surprised no, if the no, Blue Jays take them to three or beat them, honestly. I mean, I w- well, I'm not going to so predict it, of. but... That's what I'm scared of because the Rays have had trouble against the Blue Jays, mainly in Buffalo. They haven't really had trouble against them mm-hmm. in Tropicana Field, but they have had trouble against them in, you know, in Buffalo, in that AAA stadium. So... That's why I think it'll go three. It's because the Blue Jays have played well against the Rays. And then just looking at the rest of the teams, I'm not scared of them. If the White Sox can figure it out, they could be dangerous. But right now they can't figure anything out. The one team I'm – so this might come as a surprise, but the the one team that I'm the least bit scared of for the Rays is the New York Yankees. Why? Because they've beaten them so many times. They're 8-2 against the New York Yankees this year. That's fair. And I've owned them, and I'm just not. A, and the, you know they're kind of button heads. And they wouldn't play they, in the shoebox either. They, they wouldn't play in the shoebox. They wouldn't play in the high school field that is Yankee Stadium. And uh, well, I just I'm not afraid of them. Right. They've beaten them so many times. Mm-hmm.